If you're working with Microsoft Windows, then Microsoft Power Toys can make your work life easier, or at least more efficient. It is free and packed with features. Here are my personal top three for increased productivity. The Power Toys can be installed via the Microsoft Store or downloaded with your browser. You will find the link in the description. If you download them, make sure you pick the right version for your processor type. If you don't know what processor you have, just search for System, click on System and here you should find a line with your processor information. Once the download is finished, double click the file to install the application. Just follow the setup guide and you will be fine. After the installation, Power Toys will start automatically, although you might not necessarily notice right away. Go down to your sys tray, click on the little arrow up, and then right click on the Power Toys icon and click on Settings. Once we're in the settings, first make sure that Power Toys will always run in administrator mode. Otherwise, not all the features will work. If you change this option, you need to restart Power Toys to apply these settings. On the left hand side, you will see all the available features. As you can see, there are quite a few, and all of them are useful. But today, we will look at my favorites Power Toys Run, Fancy Zones, and Video Conference Mute. The default shortcut to open Power Toys Run is Alt and Space. You can change this in the settings. Power Toys Run can do much more than just find files and folders very quickly. When searching for Power Toys, you can see various kinds of results. There is the option to execute the entered command directly through the command shell, a result for the actual application, for the link to the application, and an option to search for it on the web, as well as several folders containing the word Power Toys. Now, this can be quite overwhelming. Fortunately, we can configure the search behavior. Let's take a look at the settings. Here, we can disable the run feature, but nobody wants to do that. We can also customize the shortcut used for opening the run window. I left the default of Alt and Space. Out of the remaining options, I only changed the value for the number of results shown before scrolling. By default, this is 5, I set it to 10. Scrolling down, we see a long list of plugins. Each of those can be deactivated, which means the results won't be included in PowerToys Run. Additionally, you can define specific direct activation commands for each of them. I suggest you go through them in detail. For the sake of brevity, I will highlight those that I use the most, starting with Windows Search. The most common use case is probably to just search for files and folders. It does exactly what you would expect. I always want these results to be included in the global result. That means, if I don't use a direct activation command, Windows search results will always be displayed. I also deactivated the warning about non-indexed files because, quite frankly, I found it somewhat annoying. Going back to our global results, I will search for the same string, but this time I will use the question mark as a direct activation command. As you can see, this limits the results to items in my file system only. For a quick online search, you can use two question marks as direct activation command. If you do that, PowerToys Run will use whatever search engine is the default in your browser. If you want to find only programs or applications, you can do that by using the period character as a direct activation command. PowerToys Run is also useful for quick calculations. The direct activation command for that is the equal sign. Again, if you don't use a direct activation command, this also works, but will include more results. The last quick highlight in PowerToys Run is for searching Windows settings. Instead of going through the start menu, I simply use the dollar sign as a direct activation command. Next up is the video conference mute feature. This is a relatively small thing, but brings great benefit, especially nowadays with video calls and conferences being the norm. Video Conference Mute allows you to define system-wide keyboard shortcuts to mute and unmute your microphone, turn your camera on or off, or do both at the same time. For this feature, I changed the default shortcuts. I wanted to have a shortcut that I could easily reach with a single hand. As I need my right hand for the mouse, I opted for Control and Backtick for the microphone mute, unmute, and Control, Shift and Backtick for the camera on off. What makes it so great is that it works across various applications. It does not matter whether you use Microsoft Teams, Zoom, Skype, Slack or any other application. You will always be able to use the same shortcuts instead of having to remember the application specific ones. Let's move on to fancy zones. 
Fancy Zones has two main benefits. First, it lets you define multiple zones on your screen and second, it makes it very easy to snap windows to one or more of these zones. Like many of you, I do a lot of video calls and frequently share specific applications. As I have an ultra-wide monitor, sharing the full screen or windows in full screen mode will result in a letterbox effect for the viewers. With fancy zones, I combine some of these zones to resize any window to 1920x1080, in other words, full HD, making sure that other participants get the best possible view. Here is a simple example with a file explorer window, which I usually keep open down here, a Word document for writing notes, a browser window for research, and a Visual Studio window. I can arrange all these windows very quickly, giving me access to each of them without having to switch around or search for them. If you found this video even remotely helpful, perhaps drop a like or even subscribe to the channel. For you it's free and it does help me. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time.